Welcome to the Paint Man Journeying channel. I am the Paint Man Journeying. This is part two on my introduction series where I paint an orc necromancer from Artisan's Guild. So if you haven't seen part one, check that out. Nothing too fancy about this part. I'll just be getting paint onto the leather, bones, hair, and cloth. So let's get to it. For today, I'm starting off my palette with carbon black, orange, red oxide, and yellow oxide, all from Chimera Colors. So I was a bit silly here and left some of the palette out of shot, but what I'm intending to do is the Chimera Colors don't come with any brown. You're supposed to mix your own. Well, I didn't know how to do that, but it did come with a little guide to explain it a little bit. And it's as simple as using carbon black and the orange and just mixing them together. And it was quite, it was basically an amazing transformation. So you can see here, I'm just adding other colors like the yellows and the reds in order to get it to be the kind of brown I want for the leather because I wanted to go with a more of a red tone. But just adding the orange to the black gave you this perfect, perfect dark brown. So uh, I just went along and painted all the leather parts. So it was the book, the cloak, and a few of the arm wristbands holding on the plates and gave it a, a base color. I remember to uh, do the, the hilt of the sword, which is one of the points I always tend to forget. And this little part here behind the cloak, I spotted it now and then forgot it every other time. So here I'm adding a bit more white to the palette. Um, I thought about using a yellow to try and brighten it up, but I didn't think that um, essentially would give me the right tone because now I'm going to be building up scratches on the armor. So I did use a bit of yellow, but mostly to brighten up, I just used the uh, white here. And then for technique on this one, I'm simply, it, mostly I'm just stippling. And so I'm picking out the edges of the um, leather, stippling a bit of this on it. This one quite heavy at first because it is just the, the first tone between, so it's the mid-tone kind of thing. And I get all the edges that I possibly can. Now his cloak I think was a bit too large for this while it works on like wristbands and whatnot fairly simply there was just so much surface area on this that i would have went crazy trying to get it all i'll show you what i did with the cloak in just a little bit but for the most part just stippled on the edges So for the cloak, because it's a wider surface area, I decided to do uh, a wet blend instead. And then I would fill in the gaps between kind of the little patches with black later, which you'll see. Um, so here I will wet the model first and then I will apply my light color and then add, grab some of the dark color on my brush, blend that in, and then just do that over the whole surface. Also adding in some black for these really dark recesses. So it was a three color wet blend and it's, once it dries, it it's, you kinda, you see a bit of transition, but not too much. And I didn't want too much on this because it is just leather and I'm not a huge fan of um, leathers being too contrasted. And on that note, what I'm doing here is I'm, I found it too bright already, and so I'm taking a bit of the darker shades, the mid-tones, and just stippling those on in a very, it's a little watered down, so it's uh, nice and translucent, but that just kind of helps keep the places I wanted dark, dark as well, while still kind of having that little stippled scratch underneath. And here again, I'm just applying one more 
little wet blend with the lighter shade to get it up to what I want it to be. When it comes to doing this leather, I kind of go back and forwards with my tones. So here I'm actually outlining with my darkest shade mixed with a bit more black. And this will kind of give me the definition, but I am still going to go lighter on some of the scratches and edges later. So this is just kind of to get get my darkest tones in there and get the lines and the textures where I want them and then I'll add a bit more texture after with a lighter shade. And here you can see that I'm just mixing up the lighter shade. I didn't want, because I'm adding so much white, I want to make sure I don't make it white and so I'm adding other tones of paint in there, that yellow and the orange, just to keep it so that there's color to it. Otherwise you just end up with a white highlight which makes it look shiny which I think isn't right for worn leather. And then I, I did the cloak with the dark lines and I'm just doing the, the edge highlighting here. I pick out just a few locations, nowhere major, because I think if I did it over all over the whole surface of that cloak, it'd look a bit weird, but just on those very edges where it would catch dirt and stuff, I think would look fine. So here I'm mixing up more of that base brown color that's just made with the orange and uh, black. And this was to do the hair. Now this is where I made a mistake earlier. So I started doing the hair and then I realized that I can use this color on the bones as well. And I should have actually used it on the book. So I could have base coated all of this at the same time, but it took me till now to figure out I should have done that. So at least in this case, I got the hair and the bone at the same time, just base coated. Luckily here, I did actually remember his little leg horns as well um, which is oddly enough they're only on that one side they're not actually on the other leg at all and then once it was base coated i moved on to doing the hair adding a bit more uh, yellow and orange to the base mixture this is kind of the start of the hair mist mixture. Now, originally I said I was going to go more khaki, which is white and yellow, which I'll get more to later when I'm doing the bone. But for this case, I decided that maybe I would go more blondy brown. And so I mixed in way more yellows in my mixes. And um, that's kind of the direction I'm going to go for with the hair. Otherwise, it might look too similar to the bone. And I did want them to stand out differently, especially because they're side by side here. And so you can kind of see how I'm layering up the, the different shades of the yellow that I mixed and then just doing fine lines to get that um, final lightest highlight. Now this is still going to end up being a bit too bright, but then we come back to it and bring it back down later like we did with the leather. First, I make sure that I've got every single point that I want to be the brightest of the highlights up to that highest or that lightest kind of yellow blonde color. It will look like right now it looks really, really bright, but it will it will be toned down quite a lot. So I got to make sure that these are very heavy. And so this is where I'm toning it down. So I take the original mixture, the brown. I add a lot of water, but there's still a lot of pigment in there. And so in this case, some of it will show through, but really you're changing the color of that hair. And so this is taking the whole, whole of it and turning it uh, more brown again to get away from that light, light blonde. And I'll even be adding uh, some black in some of the areas. So 
difference right here. I'm mixing up the the black and it's it's quite dark because of this I'm using the fine detail brush and going in between the hairs to separate them and define them more. And I'll even use it to add a bit of texture on like thicker pieces of the hair. And so even though there's no strand separated there, you can make it look like there are just by adding a thin black line between them. It's not perfectly black, there is some brown in there, and it makes it so that you, it, I mean, it looks dark going on while it's wet, but it will dry a little closer to the shade that you want it. Now I'll be getting started on the bone, and for this I need to mix up a khaki. And so I kind of have the my so I kind of have my artist colors there as a reference as I mix this. But according to the guide, it's as simple as white and a yellow oxide. And so I mix those in, and it seems it, I mean it is kind of correct. Um, but I do mix in a little black just to tone down the yellow a little bit, and then it gets me more towards that bone khaki color. And then I also mix in some of this brown because I feel it wasn't bone enough. It was the right color, it just needed to go a different shade. And that's when that's how I got my base color. So it's essentially a mix of orange, black, yellow, and white all together. And for it, I just paint a base coat on the bone, leaving pretty much the deep recesses in brown. By doing it this way, because those bone pieces are very individual, it'll save me on having to do some black lining later. So it's basically skipping a step for later by just being controlled with my base coat right now. So here I'm, I'm mixing up the loaded brush. I loaded the brush up with my uh, just a brown color and added the, the color I used to base to the tip. And so I will start with that base color at the very tips of the bone. And then as it spreads out, blend in a bit of the brown towards the middle of the, the bone segments. And that will make it so that I have a light tip with a dark center. Now I don't go too dark with bone. I don't like that large contrast because bones themselves in real life are very matte. So that's about as dark as I go with these and then I'll just go lighter from here. And so this is stippling a, a lighter color with a bit of white just on the edges. And then by stippling, I get a bit of texture. So bone, when you look at it, it has old bones. So like fossils and, and just bones that have been dried out for a little while they have kind of these holes in them and so in order to mimic that is where you use little dots of stippling and textures just to kind of give that effect. And then here because I want to add a bit more separation of the bone. So um, for the most part, it's separated from the armor. I just have to separate the bone from itself. So I'm using a fine brush to add a little black and brown between them just to separate them out. So this is where we do that, that final stippling texturing. I take the white and just on the very tips, of those bones, I add little dots wherever the, the light would be. And this will add kind of a, a text, so it'll add a highlight, but also give it a, the texture that you want. For a fresh palette, I'm adding carbon black orange, warm yellow, cold yellow, and white. For the cloth, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and I actually asked around, so I kind of posted a screenshot from the model so far and asked people what would be a, a good color for the, the cloth, so his little loincloth and some of the cloth under his wristbands. 
and uh, I never got an answer. So here I'm experimenting. I'm just taking the black and mixing in all the different oranges and yellows to see kind of what color I can get. Because I know when you mix black and a cool yellow, you end up with a green. When I mix black and the oxide, you end up with a more kind of camo green which is not what I wanted. And so in this one, I just ended up going with the cool yellow. However, I will add a bit of orange to make it brown for the recesses. So it does have a bit of a tone shift. So to start it, I just base coat it in that, that original mix. And then I add a few hard lines. So these are kind of sketching lines to show me what are gonna be those highlight points. And then from there, I do a loaded brush blend. And so I will load up my base color and then add more of the uh, uh, lighter colors that I had mixed previously to blend it out over the cloth. I do go back and forth a little bit, making sure that I keep some of the uh, dips in the cloth a bit darker and just to also keep it wet while I do this wet blending. Getting into some of that brown I had mentioned earlier. So I wanted the shadows to have a different tone. So kind of one of the best ways to make your shadows stand out without actually going darker is to actually just shift the tone a little bit. So in this case, adding orange shifts it towards a brown. You can see how kind of it, it gives that side of the cloth. So if you're looking at it as a light source, so this is the under the side of the cloth, a bit of a tone shift. Now I've seen people do this to the extreme. So one side of the cloth will be red and the other side will be green because those are contrasting colors and you uh, can really see the difference, but it's not black-white contrast. It's a color contrast, which is much more striking. And so that's why I figured I'd just go with the brown here, make it kind of like you do for most cloth when it's a like bandages and stuff like that. And you would go with a brown to a light uh, tan. Whereas because I just want to keep this one yellow, I decided to still go with that brown. Now to highlight cloth, to me, it's all about texture here. So the one way you can make cloth um, look like cloth is to not give it a lot of uh, contrast. So don't go very dark, don't go very light kind of thing. Just a few, like a little difference between the dips and valleys. But in this case, you can also do quite a lot by just adding texture. So I'm using the fine point tip of my brush and dragging it in crosshatch patterns along all those highlights as if the pattern of the cloth itself is is being highlighted so for me as I was painting it the contrast still seemed a little bit too high for cloth so I'm using the airbrush to correct this so starting with kind of the dark brown recesses just test it on my hand from a specific angle, so that's why I'm turning the model in such a way so that I'm only hitting the bottom parts. It's thinned out quite deeply, and I'm only trying to get it on the lower part, like basically the the sides that's showing down instead of up. And so that's why you want to angle it, and it's just to kind of blend out some of those lighter highlights while also adding a bit more color. And now I'm just going the opposite direction. And so in this case, I'm taking my bright yellow, not the super brightest, but a bright yellow. There's a lot more thinner than there is pigment in this one, because I want to keep it very light. And then from the top angle, so again, angling the model like I need to in order to not spray too much on the undersides, just giving this kind of a, a light dusting just to lighten it up overall a bit more and to essentially blend those blends a little bit better. Oh, 
when I need to go a bit faster with my spraying, I will use air from the airbrush to dry it. And then here's where I want to get to the very tips and I want to add more pigment, but I don't want to get it on anything else. So I'll use my thumb as kind of a mask and then I'll do that in two spots. So just at the bottom here and then near the top where it would hit things like the armor and his skin, which I don't want to get yellow because that would be weird. So that's it for this part. Not too much on this one, just some good old fashioned painting. I want to thank you again for watching and I'll see you one more time in part three when at the end I'll be going over some of the things I've learnt in the first project of my journey into YouTube. See you then.